racing against AI is never going to be as exciting as racing against real people. However, you may have rubbish internet, or you might just feel like driving in a random car at a random track with settings that likely wouldn't work out too well in the context of online racing. These reasons and many more are why it's important that your modern racing simulator has decent single-player AI racing. Unfortunately, the AI in Automobilista 2 were, shall we say, somewhat erratic. Fortunately, with the latest update, that has gone, things have improved, and we've also got some new car shenanigans to talk about. So, fasten your seatbelts, make a cup of tea, and let's talk about what's changed. This recent update, I would say, is absolutely huge for those of you that like to do offline racing against AI. And the biggest reason for that is that the AI now no longer drive like a London bus driver through Piccadilly Circus trying to murder any cyclist that happened to have the audacity of cycling next to their vehicle. Basically, the AI no longer spontaneously wibble wobble sideswipe all over the place and they hold their lines and drive their lines and change from their line off their line in a much more convincing, believable and smooth way. Now, you might think, oh, that's that's a really small improvement that will have an inconsequential effect on the game. But you'd be wrong if you thought that, because the end result of these changes is that the race driving visually and actually in terms of what you're doing driving becomes a lot more believable and realistic though if you did enjoy the nhl hits experience of the previous versions of the game uh, you'll, you'll be very disappointed now but yeah you know ultimately it's it's just far more believable to do the ai racing not having the cars dart all over the place like an out of control snowboardist means that you can much better predict what's going on in front of you to then make a decision on how you're going to make a move and how you're going to overtake the AI cars. A result of these AI tweaks as well is that there's a lot less crazy AI accidents, especially on tighter corners and some of the chicanes on some of the circuits, which previously would literally just break the race because the, the AI would have a little bang together and then everything would stack up. Now, you definitely get a lot less three wides and the AI in general is a lot less aggressive and you do end up with a lot more convoy-ish type racing. And I'd say it's more convoy-like than what you see in reality and certainly more convoy-like than what you see online. But as you can see there right in front of us, there's a bunch of cars too wide. He's making a move. He's gone over the sausage. There's still battling going on. The AI still does make moves and it's still quite an interesting experience racing against them. The AI also seemed a bit faster at the start of the race off the, uh, off the grid not perfect look you will if you just start when the lights go out and you start at the back of the grid you, you will easily pass five or six of the ai and then you know as is with all ai racing if it's a tight t1 corner you can pass even more but it does seem like quite an improvement that, that it's not tesco's car park anymore with just grandmas in the vehicles you know this is more like your sort of 60 year olds in the vehicles slow reaction times slow get slow to get going but not not uh, mobility scooter slow so that's a nice slight improvement and then also when the AI go off track or you drive them off the track by punting them uh, or they punt into each other in front they uh, don't block the road up as much and they don't seem to slow everyone else down as much so you know it's just lots of tweaks and improvements and polish which Reza is so good at um, that has resulted effectively in I would describe it as a good 6.5 out of 10 tea bags AI experience. Basically, your average player and probably the type of player that likes to do more AI racing will find the AI as it is right now pretty satisfactory. As you get to higher skill levels or uh, you know more used to cars and faster lap times and you you're more used to online racing and more adept at racecraft and stuff, you will obviously still find the AI 
rather underwhelming and you you know you work out where they're slow and then it just becomes quite repetitive beating them but even as an ai hater that i am i have to admit they do perform their function really quite nicely at this point in time in ams2 good job on the ai there good update so also in this update we've got the bmw m6 gt3 and the Janetta g55 gt4 Obviously, in this video, we're driving a GT3 field with the BMW M6. And this car, I would describe as interesting in Automobile Lister 2. As is the case with every single driving simulator, it blows your mind, in, not in a good way, <laughs> when you go from iRacing, ACC, Original Assetto, R Factor 2, Race Room, and Automobile Lister 2, go from each sim, they all have their own interpretation of real world physics and obviously ams2 is no different um so you have to approach this very differently to acc which is what i've been playing quite a lot of recently uh not necessarily in a in a, in a bad way that there's the the force feedback in this uh, bmw m6 is a lot more informative especially mid corner sort of loading and the sense of like uh sort of grip and uh variation in the force feedback is is better than a set of course competition um the car as well is a lot more nimble and sort of has a bit more poise to it a bit more snap to it than the cars in acc which is still a lot more stable and a lot tamer than uh than this car for example in automobilista 2. The big thing with uh, automobilista 2 though which is quite tricky still and is the case with this bmw m6 is the lack for the front to want to bite in yeah you, i feel like i'm just uh, mashing on the brake pedal to get on braking nose in to go into the corner and uh it, with the lift off oversteer again is just like so there's barely any lift off oversteer so much so that in, in a sense it seemed to me to make more sense to put a bit of brake on while I was pushing the throttle to try and get the nose in which just seems a bit weird but um you know and uh, then also a characteristic of this is that you seem to have to put a lot of steering lock in to get the cars to turn around the corner which is something that was uh, a, a known technique in project cars too which i, I don't necessarily mind I, I don't care personally i'm not a snob with these things as long as it feels generally like a car but uh when you go from sim to sim and you have to make these adjustments it, it like blows you does your head in especially if you're then trying to race online and, and <laughs> be and be uh, vaguely competitive but you've got ai that we're racing against and they we put them on a like 80 or 90 so they're nice and slow so it's all right um weirdly the uh, bmw is really quite progressive on the throttle as long as you've not loaded the tires up totally and you when you're carrying through the corner uh, you you have a lot of slack with the throttle and you can really nicely modulate the throttle pedal out the corner to control the amount of rear slip uh, and uh, so the sort of on power oversteer and the on power getting the nose of the car in or getting the back out on the power is really nice really pliable really progressive and really communicative it's it's all the off power aspects of uh, getting the rear out which uh, across the board with pretty much every vehicle in automobilista 2 is very muted and very toned back which you may like and uh, you, or you may not like so that, that's just that's just the character of the simulator as as i'm noticing it though uh I, I think as as new updates have come out this one hasn't changed since the last one but as updates have come out i i think liftoff oversteer has increased a touch but not a huge amount now in terms of the audio of this car i will say the audio does obviously it's nowhere near as good as uh race room or acc you, you can hear the audio there's the occasional um, sort of click in the in the audio and a little bit of clip in there. So I think this is one of the vehicles where the audio's maybe not finished yet or not fully dialed in because the uh, Janetta G55 sounds way better, way more in tune, way more satisfying to, to just drive and listen to. But this BMW to me definitely seems like one of the cars where the audio is just a little bit lacklustre. It don't, it don't quite fully titillate me. Though, you know, we've been massively spo spoiled <laughs> with audio in driving sims, as with race room, um, AC mods, and, and a set of course competition. 
So uh, now, now the developers <laughs> have to uh, sacrifice even more time and effort to get all their cars up to that degree of audio quality, which is pretty bonkers, really. But tough, their fault for being a developer. We are the players, we get the fun, they get the pain. But with this recent update, it is basically AI, two new cars, some polish, tweaks, and improvements here and there. You know, with Reza smashing out updates at the speed of a Roger Federer serve, it's, uh, you kind of take it for granted a bit. I mean, the, the amount of update and content in this would in many cases be considered a bit a big update with some other developers so it's just you know it's great like it's a nice thing with ams2 it's all over the place in a sense and it definitely doesn't feel like a finished game and in my mind it definitely feels still kind of alpha -y, beta -y, you know some stuff's great some stuff's pretty awful some stuff's amazing it's all over the place <laughs> but at least you know if you have got it the new stuff's going to keep coming out you can have a lot of fun with it, and it's only going to get better. So, uh, credit where credit's due, I say. Before we get to the end of this video, I want to reiterate that you do have the feature in AMS2, which I think is awesome, of being able to create your own server and fill it with AI, but also have a couple of human players in there. So you can do racing with your friends, but with a full grid. I think that's really awesome. I'm surprised it's not in more simulators. Um, these AI improvements will obviously improve that as well. So just restating that for those of you that, were, that aren't aware that you can do that. And then also, obviously, one of the big reasons why I'm a big fan of AMS2 and why I like live streaming it is obviously you can do the peer-to-peer -peer service system. You don't need to do a whole setup, server setup thing. You can just launch a, a server from within the game and it all actually works pretty nicely and seamlessly with you then having all the Automobilista 2 tracks uh, and cars and range of content that it's got. So this is why I want to see AMS2 keep getting better, and it is getting better, and uh, also why hopefully soon we'll be doing some more online racing with AMS2, especially in the new Genetta G55 GT4, because GT4 cars tend to produce a lot of fun online racing. They're not too fast, they're not too slow, they're not too easy, they're not too hard. They're just all round good fun. So if you want to join in with that, you know, you need to subscribe, click the like button and everything, and then you'll catch us when we next go live with Automobilista 2 and you'll be able to jump in there. But uh, that's about it, really, guys. That's the news of Automobilista 2. It'll be like three days and they'll do another update. I'll be like, oh, come on, guys. Need a break in between these so I can cover other games. Microsoft Flight seems to have an update soon. It's never ending. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Let me know what you'd like me to talk about more of with Automobilista 2 in the comment section so I can try and cover the things that people are interested in. But until the next video or live stream, happy tea drinking, everybody. Happy sim racing. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.